How do you choose and analyze the content of your course? Is all the content equally important? The topic of this video is core content analysis. How well do you know the concept? Let's take a short quiz before we start. Core content analysis, sometimes called also core curriculum analysis, aims to answer the question, what? It is a tool for planning and developing teaching, especially in higher education. Core content analysis enables a teacher to explore the internal structure of the course content, for example, hierarchical relations between the information and the connections between theoretical knowledge and practical skills. The tool can also be used to analyze the content of major or degree programs. So, why conduct a core content analysis? The 21st century is characterized by abundance of information and knowledge. If the course contents are not regularly analyzed and prioritized, there is a risk of information overload in the course. Not all the course contents are equally important. A teacher needs to analyze and prioritize the course contents in order to point out the core content. This is necessary in order that the students may achieve the intended learning outcomes of the course. Core content analysis utilizes a variety of categories and classifications. Perhaps the most widely used is one that divides content into three categories. Course content should fall into these categories so that approximately 80% of the course content is the core content of the course. The must-know content means content that is necessary to have a command of in order to be successful in future studies. This should be the main focus of the course, and the intended learning outcomes should be composed with this content in mind. Approximately 15% of the course content is complementary knowledge. This should know content adds theoretical details and clarifies less common applications. Approximately 5% of the course content is special knowledge. This nice-to-know content further reinforces the student's command of the content. Here you can see a core content divider, in which the content is divided into must-know, should-know and nice-to-know contents. Sometimes the content is subdivided further into the academic discipline and professional skills categories in order to enable a more detailed analysis of the knowledge and skills, as has been done in this case. There are also other categorizations that can be used in core content analysis. Here you can see content themes for the module How to plan my course. Take a few moments to browse through them. How can a core content analysis be made of these themes? Well, let's find out. In our example, approximately 80% of the content themes, such as learning outcomes and teaching and assessment methods, fall into the must-know category, that is, knowledge about these contents. Corresponding skills, that is, what the student will be able to do, includes the ability to formulate learning outcomes choosing suitable teaching and assessment methods, and justifying the teaching decisions made. Approximately 15% of the content themes will fall into the should-know category. Knowledge about these contents is important, but not the core contents of this module. The corresponding skills could appear as shown in the table. Approximately 5% of the content themes will fall into the nice-to-know category. This special knowledge might be learned when learning the must-know and should-know contents as kind of a byproduct of other learning, and it can vary among people according to their own interests and motivations. The corresponding skills could appear as shown. Now, consider your own course. Perform a core content analysis of it utilizing a core content divider. You can use any categorization that best suits your own purposes. When you have identified the core contents of your course, remember to check the connection with the learning outcomes of the course. 
a template for performing a core content analysis can be found on the web pages for this module.